Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be painting with gouache for the second time ever. I've done it once before and I made this kind of fall road landscape, but now I'm going to be doing a whole another page, which is so exciting and so satisfying. It's a dream to fill that entire book with gouache paintings. And here is my little Hemi gouache set that I'm going to be using. So far it's worked for me and I made sure to double check that it was all still wet and it was, I sealed it correctly. I could just see myself somehow not closing it right, but I love this set so far. I don't really have anything to compare it to since it's my first gouache set ever, but I've seen a lot of other people use it, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. But I'm going to be painting this painting that I made all the way back in 2018. It's got this little orca whale, a little sailboat, and an ocean woman with sea wavy hair. So that's my inspiration for this page. So let's start by taping off the edges so I can have a nice clean and crisp space to work on to create my art which I'm very excited to try to recreate this painting that I think is cool so like and subscribe and let's do it. I think it's always the coolest to redo old art because it really just shows you how far you've come in a really evident way because you're creating the exact same thing, but then you get to see it with all of the added improvements and things years later. So first I'm starting off with my sketch. I'm going to keep this one very close to the original, but obviously add a lot of differences to it because I've changed a lot in my style and how I approach things and how I do things. So I'm starting off with a side profile, which I think are one of the the more challenging face angles and then I'm putting in the little ocean at the bottom obviously this page is a little different so my composition is going to be different than the first page but I still wanted to include all of those important features and elements like the sailboat the face the whale and obviously the ocean so first I just started by mapping everything out in paint and now I'm going ahead in with this color tan first and I'm putting this down just as a layer where I want all of the dark things and shadows to go just to start mapping it out in my head and then I watered out the paint and kind of did thinner layers of color to start building it up but also to help me see where all of the shadows needed to go and I really like the gouache because it's kind of like a blend in my opinion between acrylics and watercolors where you can really water them down and create a translucent effect but at the same time they are extremely opaque and cover things super well but they also continue to blend even after they've been laid down so it's super cool to have that element to them that's different than any supplies that I've used which is very unique it's challenging in some ways but also extremely helpful in others I feel like my techniques and things I use in acrylic painting definitely translate over to gouache but in different ways because it also doesn't all the time there are a lot of things that you have to do differently with gouache than acrylic especially with it picking up colors that you've already laid down. Obviously with acrylic paint, it just dries like instantly. Like a lot of people don't like acrylic paint because it's just an immediate drying factor. And I really like that because I'm impatient and I just want my colors to set and stay still. And I'm a huge fan of layers. So it's helpful for me to put down a layer that will dry and then I can move on and do the next one and build the colors. But for gouache, it's not quite the same because it will still pick up and move pigment that's been laid down previously. So that was probably the biggest difference that I saw, but then I just continued kind of using the same techniques that I know how to use and soften the colors to make them appropriate. What I also really like about this Himmy gouache kit is that it comes with so many colors, so I didn't really have to worry too much about blending my own colors. I could really focus on just trying to get the technique of gouache down, which made a big difference in my ability to spend time trying to learn the craft and trying to make sure that I was doing it well and being super patient in trying to make sure I was getting all of the features right. The face in this painting definitely took the longest time, which makes a lot of sense. People are very dynamic and are definitely probably the hardest thing to draw about this entire painting here. But I decided to just take a lot of time and make sure that the colors were really flushed out. And then I did a lot of highlights and shadows and made sure that the face structure looked the way that I wanted it to, which included a lot of touch ups. And one of my favorite things to do is to take a picture of my art and then flip it in the camera just to kind of 
kind of see how all of the proportions are looking and how things are turning out. And that is super helpful to make sure that your art looks okay. If you haven't heard that before, flip your art. It makes the biggest difference in seeing your imperfections and trying to fix things a little bit. It just helps point out the little wonky pieces of your art. And it's very helpful and humbling. So then I went ahead in and started adding in some littler details, which I think were starting to make a huge difference and turning out really beautiful. And I think that adding in some warmer colors to the face really helped make her feel more alive and brought her some color. I kind of wanted to make it look like she's been out in the sun in the ocean. So I added in some freckles and a lot of pink hues to kind of add in that color. Maybe a little bit of a sunburn indication, but be sun safe guys. And then after that, I started adding in a few little hair details and I think it was turning out so well, but here's the before and then the after of my little fixes after I took a picture of it and flipped it in the camera. So I think it makes a big difference in just seeing the things that you can make to adjust slight adjustments to make it so much better. So then after that, I continue at adding in a little bit more color and shading. And I think the face was looking very rendered, but also still very much my style with that beautiful highlight on the chin and that pop of color on the cheek and the nose and the lips. And I thought it was looking really pretty. So then it was time to move on to the ocean. The ocean in the original painting was looking very chaotic. I decided to cancel out the orca whale because I'm pretty sure that, you know, you won't just find those in the middle of the ocean somewhere warm and tropical and that's kind of the vibes that I wanted this painting to give off was kind of a warmer and sunnier summer beach kind of vibe so I decided to calm the ocean down and make it a little more tame because out in the middle of the ocean there are crashing waves and big moments but most of the time you see the softer waves in the distance and in the background and that's where we are in this painting we're way out in the middle of the ocean somewhere so I really wanted that to come through and translate by showing that there is some depth to the waves but also that they're out there and kind of more chill and tame and we're just out in the middle of the ocean the dead middle okay that's what I was going for so I added some softer waves and shadows and then a lot of highlights to blend those out and I think that this was looking so good and then I also really tried to make sure that from the right side of this painting our right that the hair kind of connected and looked like you could see a transition transition from the hair to the ocean because in the original painting I had a lot more room to show that her hair was connected to the sea but here I only have a very little corner to show that transition so I really tried to add that in too but also made sure to render the ocean and keep it very sparkly and very contrasted. I really wanted there to be dark darks in light lights and of course I added a tiny little sparkle to really emphasize that and here I am adding in that kind of hair texture to the side and now it's time to work on this little sailboat that's kind of one of the main stars of the show I definitely think the face in the ocean take the cake but I do think that this little sailboat is an important part of this painting so I want to do it some justice as well so I decided for the sail about to kind of keep it very similar to the original and I just started by giving it a solid warm color brown which I think was a perfect color to kind of contrast all of the cold that it was floating in and then after that I added in the sails at this point of the painting I was definitely getting tired of painting but I still loved how it was turning out so I wanted to push through and make sure that it was the best I could do all the way through till the end if you noticed, the little boat does not have a person. And at the time of painting this the first time, all the way back in 2018, that was intentional because I didn't want to have to draw a tiny little person in that boat and try to make it look detailed and render it. That was going to be my nightmare. But I actually think that it's become a part of the story, which I will tell at the end and tell you kind of what I think the story behind this painting is. But I do think that it's funny that the sailboat does not have a person in it. But I decided to just continue on with the sails. And once I finished the boat, it was time to work on the sky. And I kind of liked that everything in this painting so far had a different feel and texture to it. The face was different than the ocean. The ocean was different than the boat. And now every 
everything's going to be a little bit different from the sky. Everything's kind of painted in my style, but in its own unique way. And I think that that was really cool. And I love all the different textures going on. So for the clouds, I decided to keep them extra wispy and I added in some gray to make them look like they had been storm clouds that are now either rolling in or rolling away. I guess that's up for you to decide. But then it was time to add in my finishing details and touches, add in the little wispies, extra little highlights everywhere. And I was feeling really, really good about this one. I think it's looking great. So now it's time to take off the tape and reveal the crisp edges. In my opinion, this is when it all starts to come together when you can see that final reveal. It's so satisfying to take off the messy tape and to see those clean lines in a finished painting. But here is how it turned out. I think that it looks so cool and so beautiful and really tells a story. Here is the original painting from 2018 and here is the one now. Obviously, a lot has changed, but I still think it kept its integrity from the original and I also think it looks so good next to to the orange like the blue and the orange contrast is so fun but anyway we're here to focus on this painting for now but I think it looks so good and here is my story that I think this painting tells so you see that the sailboat is empty and you also see that there are some gray clouds floating off in the distance and I think that this boat did have a sailor but that the storm took it away and that this woman represents the ocean and just kind of the danger out there and just that's the circle of life that's what I think Think, but my husband told a different story. He sees a woman waiting for her husband to come back from sea. But let me know what you see in this painting. And if you want to shop this gouache set, I will link it down below on Amazon for you guys. But like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!